Okay, I think I'm live. Let me know I'm live if you are in the chat because I am blind to this right now. You guys see me? Let me know. All right, so I am trying a new setup. I am trying to get my live streaming down a little bit cleaner. Oh, let me, uh, let me, all right. So I got the new MacBook 16 inch. I am mirroring to a few displays. I got 10,000 cables. I have a Nikon Z6 right here in front of me that I've been using for Twitch. And I wanted to try something out. And the one thing I really wanted to do with this live feed was get it to a place where I could have an actual feed from my laptop while I'm tethering. So you guys aren't looking at a picture in a picture because a lot of times you're not seeing like the real exposure values and stuff like that. So uh, let me just know how this works out for you. If this looks all right for you, I'll try to keep my eye on the framing a little bit. And we should be able to do this. We should be able to go and just be picture in picture, which is great. And uh, that way you guys can see what I'm shooting, actually what I'm shooting, not a, an, a really horrible exposure. I think there's like 20 streams I've done where I was like, oh, uh, uh, I'll shoot darker so it looks right or whatever. So let me know if this is working out for you guys. Let's go back to, oh, is it not going? Is this not feeding out? Oh, no. No, is that, did you guys not get that? Is that not? You guys got to tell me in the chat. I hate this. Uh, my life is at 15 seconds behind the world, apparently. So let me know if you guys saw the switch from me to the laptop with me in the corner, if that worked out for you. Okay, so I wanted to talk about white backgrounds, and I've been waiting for a setup like this to do this, because if I were to shoot a white background of a white painted mannequin in a white room, ah, cool, it works, great, fantastic. We're in business, baby. Um, if I were to shoot this and then you saw a Mevo picture of my screen, you'd be like, oh, there's no detail, the white's washed out, there's weird gradations. And I think one of the big problems that people find when doing a white background is, one, they get gradation tones, they don't get a real white background. You wanna make sure that you never, you, you just get that white background in camera and you don't have to hit it with a dodge tool or mess somebody or whatever. You wanna make sure that you're dead on uh, with your, um, with your white from edge to edge, right? The other thing I'm finding people have a problem with is that they get blowback, not flare, but blowback, where it's actually the light coming back around and causing a fog in front of their subject, which is really just a, um, too much power happening. So there's a way to get your ratio like dead on. Let me just check the chat really quick. Looks good, saw the switch. All right, cool, great. All right, this is awesome. This is awesome, I've been waiting for this. All right. Uh, so that's, we're going to talk about power ratios, how to really keep an eye on what you're shooting and how you want to shoot it and make it look really clean and crisp. Because if you can do a white background out of the camera for a headshot, you're going to look like a million bucks to somebody and they're going to come back for more work from you and everything like that. So let's go over this. What's going on? Christian, Dylan, Mike, everybody's in the chat. Robert, what's going on, everybody? So yeah, we are going to be able to see exactly what I'm tethering into. I'm going to be shooting with my Nikon D850. You guys are looking at me on a Nikon Z6, and twice already I grabbed the Z6 by accident instead of my 850 and went and shot with it. So if I do that, I apologize. Uh, let me know how it sounds, everything like that. All right, so the first thing I wanna do is I'm not, you could do this with speed lights, but I'm not going to. And the reason is, one, I'm in a freshly painted all white studio. No joke, I have no shoes on. I got paper plates under everything that's touching the floor because it's still curing. Uh, so I have a ton of light reflection going on and there's sun blazing through the windows. So I want some power. I didn't want to do speed lights and have to fight this. Number two, which I want you to realize is I am not just finished up a pizza. Congratulations. Too bad it wasn't a New York pizza. Um, the other thing I want you to realize is this is going to be a headshot, not a full body with this setup. I want to do something really simple with two lights. You could do a full body uh, with an alteration to this, and I'll explain that when we get to it. But for the most part, we're going to do two lights today. I'm using Profoto B1Xs, and we're going to start off with getting the light in the space wrangled down. So I'm going to shoot at my flash tank 250 of a second, F11, ISO 100, and I'm going to do it without the trigger, and we're going to see what kind of a frame we get with just the ambient light. Hopefully she gets locked out. I'm gonna stretch my lens out and I'm gonna explain 
why longer lenses are better in this situation when we get to it. So hang tight on that. So click, and if I switch you guys in, you should be able to see that we have a black frame that we're not really seeing. Uh, we're not really seeing Sheila come up, right? So which is great. That means I'm controlling all the light. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my key light, which is set up as a is a pretty standard symmetrical overhead light with a one foot box, and I'm going to go into TTL, and I'm going to tell TTL, hey, I want to make sure. Let me just make sure my background light is off. I, I'm going to tell TTL, hey, I want to make sure that I'm getting the right light output at f11 because the way TTL works is it sends out a little bit of light, it measures that light, adjusts the strobe in relation to the exposure we have in our camera. So that's how I'm going to keep f11 going this whole time. So I'm going to focus on Sh Sheila's eyes, boom, take a quick shot, and we should see Sheila come up with TTL light really, boom, right there. Okay, so this is really nice, right? We have a fast fall off, and that's what I want when I'm doing black and oh, when I'm doing black and white, Jesus Christ. Uh, when I'm doing white backgrounds, I like a fast fall off personally. The reason is I get this shadow to highlight around because what's gonna end up happening is if I light this white backlight, a uh, back wall, it's gonna reflect light back and it's gonna fill in those shadows. So the last thing I wanna do is add light on top of light for that, and I'll start having a blowout. Let me uh let me take us back to me now. Sorry guys, I'm getting used to this setup. I'm trying to find like where my mouse is and stuff. Oh, and so that's our key light, right? We have her shaped, and that's what we want with our key light, is shaped from our subject the way we want it. I want it very sculpted, a lot of shadow detail, because I know I'm gonna fill those shadows in. Now keep in mind, I'm in an all white studio, right? So I'm having a really hard time. I'm having, this is way more difficult for me than it would be for someone in their home studio that might have carpet, or you're on location where light reflection isn't a big thing. I'm gonna have to really wrangle this light together to make it look the way I want. Am I too dark, guys, because the light completely just fell outside. So let me give this a little bit more ISO. Sorry guys, sorry, sorry. Is that a little better? Face tracking on them. I'm digging this face tracking stuff. So here's, you know, I should just put it on a, ah, you know what, forget it, I'm not gonna do it. Uh, I don't wanna have fluctuating exposure. Okay, so that's our key light, we're at F11. Now what I'm gonna do is get that backlight set. Now, what you're gonna say is, well, I want a white background, why don't I just crank it all the way? or I don't want to uh, have flare, so I'll just keep my light low. Well, let's try both, right? So I have my head in the back there, and I put it at five out of the whole 10, which is 500 watt seconds. And the reason I did that was, it's a, it's a middle road number. I can go one way or the other. Of course, I'm gonna tell you right now, we're gonna end up creeping that number up, right? You're dark, am I too dark? Let me see, let me see, let me see, let me see. Let me see how, 400 looks, how's 400 look? Better, we good? Better, better, better? This is why I like live, it's a two-way street, this is organic. Okay, uh, oh, and if you just joined us, I'm Seth Miranda, last ex-witness on social media. Uh, you guys might have seen me on Adorama, Adorama TV, uh, host there. And I'm trying out a new live streaming setup where I have my MacBook into OBS with a secondary screen and a Nikon Z6 tracking me where I go, although I should really put this on like auto something or other, because it is getting a little, little crazy. Hold on, guys. Okay, here, I'm gonna put this on aperture priority. That way it'll, it'll govern itself. Cool, better? Better, yeah? Okay, so, ah! 400 is nice. Okay, cool, so, all right, sorry guys, I'm like trying to like mitigate this thing. Let's just go over what we just did. We just set up a key light. I took a TTL exposure at F11. F11 gets rid of all the light in my space pretty much, give or take. And now I have a rear light back there. And let's take a walk back there really quick and I'm gonna explain to you what happened here. So when you're setting up a rear light, you don't wanna put it right up against your wall because you're not gonna get enough spread. Even if you have a zillion watt seconds, it's only going to spread so much. I want it to spread. So the closer your light is to your subject, the more light will, it'll, more room it'll have to spread. However, the farther it is away from the wall, the more power you're gonna to need to get that exposure you need, right? Because inverse square, the farther my light is from my subject, my subject for this light is the wall, I'm gonna need more power. But I have 500 watt seconds here. This is why I didn't go with speed lights for this one. 
And if I turn on this head, I put it up five, and we're probably going to get a gradated tone now. Oh, boy, who's in the chat? Did Vanessa just boil it? Were you wearing that shirt yesterday? No, I was wearing a different Jaws shirt yesterday. I just realized that. Thanks so much, Vanessa Joy. You're the best. You're the best. All right, we're going to turn on my, my head in the back. I'm going to give it a quick fire. So that's set to five. This one right here, 4.7. You're going to say, well, that's brighter. So it should give me white. It's not going to, and I'm going to show you why. Here we go. Let's, uh, I'm going to swip, I'm going to, I was not wearing this shirt yesterday. I was wearing Jaws, the video game shirt yesterday. Learn your, learn your shirts there, kids. I'm going to stretch out my lens, and the reason I'm doing that is because I'm compressing that background. We're not really compressing it, but when we zoom out our lens, we're making the spread of light appear bigger because it's coming, compressing against her back. So if a circle is only this big, when I compress it with the lens, it seems like it's this big behind her, giving me more of an edge when it comes to the spread of light. So let's take a look at her really quick. I'm going to shoot. Boom. And we're going to go into this setup right here. And you can see that we're getting gradation. That's not a white background. That's some sucker white background. This is where we were, right? This is where we were. This is where we are, and that's a sucker's white background. If you want to get a gradation, get a gradation. If you want to get white, get white. Don't go halfway like that unless you want that look, but in the end, we're going for a white background. If I gave someone that as a headshot for a white background, we'd be kind of screwed right now. So let me go over to my setup now. And now you're going to say, well, Seth, why don't I just give it all the power in the world? Okay, so if I go into my group C, I give it five more stops of light, five stops. If I do that, you hear that? I maxed out the power of that light. Okay, what could go wrong here? Let's take a look. And when I swap you guys back in, you can see that she's blown to smithereens. We lost all that detail that we were working on, right? We started here. We went to this, and now we're losing, we're losing that. This is cool for like an ethereal effect. You've seen me do this for character portraits, but this isn't really ideal for what we want to get for a white background. We want to show someone's actual details. We want to show shape of bone structure, things like that. So we have to figure out where are we going to go with our power settings on that rear light in relation to our key light to get where we want to be for the shape of our subject, right? And that's where this comes in. Now, you can get a formula down easily uh, over time, like this much distance, whatever, but you're going to be in studios. You don't know what's going on. You're going to go into office buildings that have just a white wall and not have the same space you had before. You're going to need to know where you're trying to go with these lights. So I'm going to take this remote off, off my um, camera, and I'm just going to go over to this wall and just get a quick light meter reading at 250 a second, ISO 100. And let's just see what we get. At full power, it's F27 on the wall. Yeah, that's going to be white. We saw it go white. Now I'm going to go behind her head, right? Right, right, honey? There you go. F13, and that's the problem. We're at F13 behind her head. Is it not going to, it's going to, let me see. There we go. F13 behind her head. The problem with that is that's greater than the exposure we have on the front. We metered for F11 on the front. So I know I need to go into group C and I need to take out easily at least a stop, right? And now we're looking at F9.5. Now 9.5 is in F11, right? And that's fine. That's fine. What we need is the hot spot in the middle that we're compressing with the long lens. 9.5 means that it's just a little bit brighter than the F11 we're shooting at. And that is, uh, I'm sorry, it's a little under the F11 that we're shooting at. And that's exactly what we want. We want it to not go, the exposure to go past our subject and start doing the wraparound that you're seeing over here. So now that I just adjusted, oh, there we go. You don't want to see this, this wraparound that's happening over here, this blowout. While that might look pretty to you, when you start getting definition in your subject, when you actually get the light dialed in, you start seeing stuff like this, where you actually have real definition instead of just a flattened out white mess. You can actually see what's happening 
That's how I use the light. So you see the difference? We're actually seeing our subjects shape and tone, skin tones become more realistic. And we can play games with this a little bit. I can go into my A group and I can give it like two more tenths of light. And I can bring it up just a little bit if I wanted to. And remember, I'm shooting an all white subject on a white background and see what's happening here. We're getting this, which is the big deal. These extra highlights. Remember when I said I like to shoot like this, oh, not like this, like this for a white background where I start seeing these deep, heavy tones, these, these heavy shadows, because I know that when I start lighting for the background, I'm going to start seeing, whoop, where are you? I'm going to start seeing these shadows get filled in by a rim light that just starts appearing from the reflection of the light. And I have a good amount of room here. Now I'm going to say to you, well, I could shoot like this all day, right? I can, I can, I can just go into this and not worry about it and just get a couple more frames, right? But then what if I wanted to see more definition? Well, there's an easy kind of solution to that too. Let me show you. Oop, I lost you guys. I lost you guys. Where'd you go? Where'd you go? Okay. So there's a solution to that as well. This is just headshotty type stuff. Remember when I said I'd get to that? Well, if I were to do a full body, what I would do is I would take two lights and I would set them on either side and shoot across the wall because I want them to blend over each other. I want them to feather into each other. The two lights feathering into each other make the same exposure more or less and it'll be more of an even look as opposed to two hot spots. So that's kind of what you want to do with that. But if I want a definition on that side of the face, let me see what you guys are saying by the way. I had that type of light meter I found on eBay for 200 bucks. It's awesome. Draw, let me see. How's the cheekbone and the highlight happening? The highlight cheekbone is happening from the reflection of the back wall flying back at me, but it's at an exposure that isn't overpowering my key light, which is what was happening when we went all the way to 10. Now let's say I want to see some more definition in my, in my model. Well, I could play games with the ratio all day and I could probably change it a little bit, but in the end, you're going to want to just take a, a negative fill approach to it. And we all know Negative Phil, he's that really annoying guy in the office that wants to hang himself, right? Negative Phil, get it? No. And when we have these V-flat world V-flats, which you just saw me unfold, we, we sneak them in there a little bit. And now what this is going to do is you have to think of it as like black reflection, and that's what Negative Phil is. Negative Phil is absorbing residual light that's radiating from our subject. And it's not a block, it's not a flag, it's actually like a black reflection. Watch, I'm going to show you guys. I'm going to set this one up as a comparison so you can see it. Let me just set as compare, control, and I'm going to say set as compare. And now we're going to shoot right into this setup. And you guys can see when it comes up right there. And you can see on the left side of her face, oh, that sucks, the comparison's on the other side. You can see on the left side of her face right here, and let me get rid of this. Clear compare. You can see that we're getting definition on this side of her face, right? Because before we had this, and now we're getting definition with negative fill. Do you guys see what's going on there? Let me see. What are you trying to say, Seth? Oh, Phil, I'm sorry. So the, the idea with the negative fill is it'll absorb some of that light reflecting back and it'll eat up some of the light reflecting off of her cheekbone, right? Let's throw a second one in there. Let's see what we get. Let's throw a second one in there. Let's do it. I could use a third screen so bad, it's, it's killing me right now. Let's get another V-flat world V-flat. If I say that three times fast. Let's, uh, let me, ugh. If there's any questions, let me know. But this is pretty much a really easy way to get a clean white background. Just using two lights. You don't need a crazy setup. I'm using a raw light on the background, not bare bulb, raw. There's a difference there. We can talk about that if you want. So I sneak in another black V-flat, and I'm going to try to even it out so that it looks a little. If you're going for symmetry, go for symmetry. You know what I'm saying? All right, so now let's take a shot with this. Let's take a look. Let's take a look. I'm going to punch you guys in. And boom. 
Wow, look at that definition on her. Hell yeah, that's the way to do it. Wait a second. Why are you guys smaller than you should be? What's going on here? Huh. Are you guys seeing her neckline by any chance? Because I don't see you guys seeing her neck. Oh, well. So remember, we started with no light going on, right? Just the key light. Then we threw a light in the background. And we were like, that looks like garbage. And then we just cranked that light in the background, and she became an angel. Then we really dialed it in, right? We dialed it in, and we got a white background. And then we got a white background with some texture to it. And I'm going to get rid of myself really quick so you can oh. I guess that's the problem with picture in picture. But you see how much definition we get now? You see how much we still get a rim light. We still get that shadow line that I wanted. We still have a fall off to the back of her to give her dimension off of the white. And we're still looking at a white background. And we can tool this around. We can make that white background look even cleaner and cleaner and cleaner. But in the end, what we're trying to do is get definition while not having a gradated background by accident, right? And keep in mind that part of this is going to be the angle of your backlight. If it's angled up into the wall, if it's at the parallel level of your subject, which is probably usually a better bet, um, if it's to the side or not, how far away it is from the wall, if it's not spreading enough, get it farther from the wall, move your subject and your key light farther away from it, give it room to move, you know? But that's pretty much an easy way to get yourself a white background. And we can keep on dialing this in because if, you, if I'm being honest, that's not even a completely white background. It's got a little bit of gradation to the top right, but uh, I'm just throwing this together really quick for you guys because I wanted to try this out. Do you guys get what I'm saying here? How far is each sidewall away? Uh, so uh, my rule of thumb with negative fill is the same as actual fill. Uh, you want it just until it's in, just before it gets into frame because that's the maximum amount you're going to get. You can always inch it away, but you want to see how much you can get out of that. So negative fill is like aces for me when doing things like uh, a white background. Um, what's a quick rule for judging inverse square? Hold on, I can't see these. I can't see the chat, guys. One second. What's a quick rule for judging inverse square distances? Do you just know your studio space in a really well? Is there a trick to estimating distances? So keep him, okay, so yeah, there is a trick. Um, over time, you're going to have a feel for your lights, right? Like lighting is science and feel. Science because it's always predictable, the math is always the math, and the feel is how you want it to look, what's your idea of what you want to get out of it. Now when you're talking about inverse square, it's always about half as much or twice as many. If I am one foot from her, and, my, and that wall is 10 feet from her, that's one-tenth of the space. This exposure is going to be a huge far away from that exposure if I'm using just one light. So inverse square means that no matter what, with one light, I'm not lighting that background. If I move this light to the other side of the building and lit her with it, then that's, that reverses the ratio where she's actually closer to the wall than she is closer to the light, and then the light is in that ratio. So that's how that really works, if that makes any sense. Um, would you move the V flats back and in a touch to, uh, to lose that highlight? That highlight's gonna stay there because you're lighting the white background as a reflector. You're just gonna get that white background. If you wanted to not get that reflection, you would do two lights and go either way so that the angle goes in and away from your subject as opposed to at the wall and back at your subject. Does that make sense to you? It's about the angle of reflection when it comes to those highlights on the side. Um, I have an extra trigger using my flash. Cool. Uh, Dylan, look for good condition. Keith Law, did you ever participate in motorsports as a driver? Uh, okay, well, so you guys are just having a chat in there. Um, this was a really thrown together demo. I had a, a half a day open for a second, so I figured I don't go live enough. Um, if this setup works for you guys, tell me, because I think this is way better than the Mevo setup, if you ask me. I think this is cool. Um, I just have to watch the exposure a little better, and that's about it. Uh, how could you deepen the shadows at this point? Uh, you know what? Honestly, the way I would deepen the shadows is I would start moving my key farther away to make it a harder light source 
to make it deeper shadows. What you're doing, what you're getting is what you're getting. You know, that not every lighting setup is gonna get you every type of light. You can tweak it and push it and pull it somewhere and really bully the light where you wanna go. But this is set up to pretty much be even on her. If I wanted to have deeper, deeper shadows, I'd probably uh, raise the contrast a little bit. And the way, actually, you could do it two ways. One thing, you could put the light closer in but it, it'll be really big of a nightmare because the closer the light is, the faster it falls off, you probably get more shadows. If you pull the light all the way back, it starts becoming harder and by um, like a side effect, you start getting more shadows, but it's not really what it's doing. Uh, let's see. Uh, Gray's always thinks a lot. Seth, do the V-flats have hinges? Yeah, so the, these V-flats have tape hinges and then Velcro to, I don't even know if you guys can see that have Velcro to uh, fold them down. So these are really cool because if you have a home studio, it's really obnoxious to have eight foot V flats that are stagnant. These can fold down into like, uh, what, three feet and then go under a bed. So there's that. Um, this setup is great. So thanks, man, I'm glad. Uh, well described next to you. Thank you so much. Definitely better gives an advantage actually. So I think what I want you guys to really get out of this one is you people like will stop here. You know what I mean? They go, ah, or worse, worse than that, they go, ah, that's kind of a white background. I guess that's okay. But when you start working it a little better, you get more definition for your subject. And then when you can really dial in that definition, I mean, look at that. Look at the difference, you know? I probably should have shot these at the same focal length, but whatever. You guys get what's going on there. I think that looks great, personally. I don't know why it's cropping off the bottom of my screen, though. That kind of sucks. Let me see something. Oh, no, that's not doing it. Can I do this? Are you guys seeing the bottom of her? Like, am I crazy? Eh. It's never going to be an easy setup. You see, like, there's actually a neck there. Mm, that works. Okay, let me see. Where's my, where's my mouse? I lost my mouse, guys. I lost my mouse. I lost my mouse. There we go. Uh, let me see, is that softbox centered on her? What if you offset it? Would it deepen the shadows on one side? Yeah, it, it totally would. It would definitely, let's, uh, let's give that a shot. So if I take this, and I, I really don't want to move these stands because they just painted the studio, and I have them on plates, actually. Let me get this a little moved over. Ugh. So if I did this, I turn her a little bit. Now I have a negative fill on the back of her head. Let's take a look at what this mess is going to do. Let's take a look together. Let's see what happens. Boop, boop. And there you go, more shadow to that side. You know, this is all about angle of light. Center light is center light. You know, so that's kind of like, to me, this, I, I do the demos like this to show you, if you can get it symmetrical, you can get it asymmetrical. That's the way I look at it. You can, if you can get a clean, I mean, the shadow distance inside of her bridge of her nose is perfectly even. If I can get that, I can do anything here. You know what I'm saying? And then if I wanted to, I could probably inch in this V-flat on the, on the other side where we're lighting, really inch it in. And let me see. Let's see. If I inch this guy in, this should, I don't think it's going to be a huge change, but it should be relatively uh, something. Let's take a look. Let's see what happens. And boop. Yeah, not much. There's a little bit of a change, but not much. It ate up some of the exposure, but nothing crazy. And keep in mind, we're shooting a white painted model on a white background here. So I think something like this is way cooler, personally, but that's just me. Um, we are getting the neck and star shoulders on the screen. Yeah, now you're getting those neck and shoulders, right? Uh, all right, cool. So I think that's kind of what I'm going to leave it at, guys. I want to do a quick demo. I haven't done a demo in a while. I feel like it's been forever. Um, I figured that would be a cool one, uh, especially since it's a white background of something everybody could e use easily. If you needed to do a quick headshot and wanted something a little better than um, what you've been getting, or a white background that looks super clean will always make people feel like they were shot professionally. Uh, white backgrounds are super easy to uh, do for commercial, right? Like to do like for um, either commercial work or uh, corporate headshots, easily, easily do it. They just feel more alive. They feel alive a little bit, right? So 
get into getting really clean with those and you'll be on point. Uh, you have a namesake here in Vancouver. I want to get some V-flats, but I need some studio space. So the V-flats from V-flat world are, um, are pretty, like this is, they come shipped like this. Like this is what you get, a three foot by three foot box. And when you're on the road, it's actually like almost impossible to get legit V-flats unless you know a rental company somewhere. So there's that. Uh, let me see. Uh, I gotta, you know what I need is to have like the chat right here because I'm like looking at like 0.8 font over here. Let me just grab some water real fast, guys. Sorry about that. Well, I'm glad this setup worked out. I was really nervous that I just lugged all this junk here for nothing, so I'm glad that worked out. I'm shooting the same white against white, playing with multiple gels, creating colored shadows. Yeah, you can totally play games with this. Um, that, you could gel that back light and make that back wall whatever you want, make it like a really stark color if you wanted to. Um, it's up to you. Angle of light is everything on this. I, I really feel uh, if you, you know, getting those clean highlights is great. Just watch when the model turns like this, that white highlight starts hitting the nose. What do you, you know, you gotta watch that kind of stuff, so. Oh man. My home studio is 12 by 20. I can shoot with my 200 millimeter. Yeah, I had a 12 by 20 room actually for one of my home studios at one time. Uh, white says go for corporate headshots also because most are used online. It's only lawyers I get up for gray. Gray is fine, it's just like super safe and bland, you know? With white, you get this like, no matter who they are, they just seem like they got more life to them a little bit. Especially when you hit them with highlights. You never want it to look like someone was like CGI'd in front of a white like square. That's like the most annoying to me. You want the environment to come back to them. When you, when you see, hold on, let's patch this back in. When you see this type of stuff in a, in a portrait, it looks beyond just a white and a person. It, it makes them feel like they're in an environment. It makes them seem organic to the space, even when it's super sterile like this white. So you guys have to kind of think about that too. This is what gets your stuff like to another level when you think of things that way, you know? Not to sound egotistical, but that's kind of where I'm going with that. Um, let me see. Is it the same principle for getting a white background on gray seamless? Uh, no, it's not. Um, so getting a white background on gray seamless is more about the spread of light being even. So, so I guess actually maybe it kind of is. You just, with this, I'm getting away with it a little bit. I know for a fact that that top right corner isn't perfectly white, but I'm not gonna burn a demo here trying to get it to go uh, perfectly white in front of you guys. Um, the, the, uh, the problem with the gray background is the second the light drops off, you see that gray. You know, with this white, I kind of get away with it. It's, it, it's, uh, it, it's, um, it's forgiving, so to speak. Uh, Seth, what make and model is your light meter? So the one I'm using is the Sekonic 308. I've been using it for a million years. I do have the Sekonic 858. Uh, it is amazing. I just did not bring it today because I'm a jerk. But this thing has been in my bag for a thousand years. I mean, there's pieces missing from it but it's like the best thing ever. Um, and I also have inside my light meter, I have the, uh, the RT module 32 for the uh, pocket wizards. Hey, what's up, Nick? Good to see Sheila was concerned for her safety. Yeah, they just painted the studio, so I don't, I don't even have shoes on right now. And I have paper plates and napkins under everything that's like touching the floor because they have to wax it soon. But I, and I, was, I didn't even think I was gonna go live today, so I'm glad we got to go live. Uh, I will be going live on my Twitch channel tonight, so check out twitch.tv slash lastxwitness. It's my name, lastxwitness, after twitch.tv. Actually, I'll just write in the chat, why not? Um, if you guys wanna do some live Q&A, we can do it there. Uh, twitch.tv slash last, I cannot type for the life of me. Twitch, why is this happening? <laughs> slash last. Guys, if you can't tell, I'm super rusty at going live. If you can't tell. No one uses pocket wizards, that's a lie. That's a 100% lie. Pocket wizards are used all over commercial sets. Don't even, just because lights have integrated radios doesn't mean no one's using pocket wizards. Pocket wizards have the ability to control cameras from a radio trigger. They have the ability to do hyper sync, which is high speed sync without having to sacrifice the power of the light. They have the ability to use frequencies that are only found in aerospace, like miles above the earth, so that they're not interrupted. So a lot of people that are at busy uh, places that have a lot of frequencies going on, 
do use pocket wizards. They are absolutely 100% still being used. Do not ever say that. That is crazy. Uh, that'll be like 2 a.m. for me. Uh, can I send you a shot on Discord? Yeah, Robbie, go on Discord. If you guys don't know, if you go to my uh, uh, Twitch, uh, there's a, a Discord channel at the bottom of the page. Click on it, You're, it's an automatic invite. And then just chat with me in those uh, chat rooms. I'll, I'm gonna try to go live there as a talking head thing more often so that my live Q and A's are there. So um, just uh, stick with me on that. I'd really like to grow the Twitch channel. I'm really, really, really liking that platform the more I use it. Uh, so please uh, add me there if you're on Twitch. I would love to uh, chat with you guys there and do some stream, screen, screen capture stuff. Wow, I am, I am tired, guys, man. Uh, I will be going live on fa uh, Facebook or Instagram, I can't remember, for Adorama on Monday. So be watch for that. Uh, yeah, so all that stuff. Um, thank you guys so much. If there's anything else in the chat, let me know. Is there something I didn't get to on this? Uh, to me, this seems like it's pretty complete. It's just two lights. You can use black construction paper if you had to for a negative fill. Uh, you do not have to use V-flats. You can not have that deep shadow look. It's up to you. This is why we all shoot differently. So make sure you, you know, play around and see what you like. You can even make these different colors and get different shadow colors on your uh, on your uh, subject's face, which is pretty cool for products, really, um, if you... If, if, if they're not too psychotic about the Pantone colors and their, their packaging or whatever. Uh, anything else, guys? Anything? I use Pocket Wizard to take self-portraits. Love how they can focus the lens. Pocket Wizard's amazing. And Pocket Wizard is like the radio transmitter. Um, there were actually lights years ago that had them built into them. Uh, they were uh, quantum lights, which, you know, kind of old-fashioned now, I guess. But, man, what a great radio signal. Uh, I never had an issue, never had a misfire. The Multimax transceiver lets you do anything you want, anything. Um, trigger one to the next. You could fire a light 20 miles away if you had to. If you can't figure out a way to get things to trigger, Pocket Wizard is always the answer. It's unbelievable. It is absolutely amazing. Black foam core works fine. Yeah, black foam core works great. Yeah. Uh, you, anything matte black will absorb light. Uh, you'll see photographers carry duvetine in their studio all the time. It is a, uh, it's a canvassy duct um, material that is heat resistant, so it's good to have on set, you know, stuff like that. Glad I was able to catch a live stream. Thanks a lot, Dylan. I appreciate it. Um, all right, so guys, you can do this with speed lights. Go do it. Uh, have fun with it. Remember, remember, the longer the lens, the easier of a time you're going to have with the light spreading. Uh, if it's not spreading enough and you're getting weird edges, stretching the lens sometimes help. Uh, watch how far you go with the power of your light. We could have added another probably like half stop to this light and been in the safe zone and gotten the rest of the corner filled in a little bit. Uh, nice one, Seth. Great demo top info. Thank you so much, Stephen. I appreciate it. Uh, all right, if you're new to the channel, hit subscribe, share this around. I would, I'd really like to grow this channel as well. Apparently all my numbers are down because all my efforts go to Adorama and uh, that's okay. I mean, Adorama's got a great community. I'm very proud to be part of it. Uh, you guys can check me and Daniel out live. We're going December 4th, me and Daniel together, live, YouTube, Facebook at the same time um, on Adorama and uh, Thank you, Nick, I appreciate it. And you know, do yourself a favor, get a light meter, 200 bucks, Iconic is like the light meter. Uh, and remember, this is a tool for measuring, it's not a tool to give you an answer. It's just gonna let you know what the lights are doing. It's up to you for the answer, so don't forget that part, okay? Uh, and remember, what's the point of a light meter if it doesn't measure well? So it's just like having a, a ruler that can't measure. What's the point of having a ruler? All right, uh, anything, anything? Last call, no whammy, no whammy, no whammy, all right. I'm going to, uh, thank you, Robert, I appreciate it. I hope this was helpful. Um, I'm gonna see you guys soon. Thank you so much. This was a rocky one, I'm sorry, I'm a little rusty, and I, this whole setup is really, uh, it's a thousand cables and adapters, because I, I gotta use USB-C now, it's crazy. All right, I will see you guys on Adorama Rewind, Adorama XP tomorrow on Twitch. Join me tonight, twitch.tv, last X witness. Just sign up for Twitch and join. That's it. Just come hang out in the chat. I'm telling you, it's photo nerd heaven. I'm telling you. <laughs> Great little demo. Thanks. You're very welcome, Robbie. Thank you so much for always rocking support. Uh, I will see you guys tonight on Twitch. Uh, what time is it now? 
I'll probably be on there. What time are we looking at? Whoa, what just happened? Whoa, I can't get my clock to come up. Okay, so I will see you guys, I don't know, maybe like seven o'clock or so. That way I still have like a Saturday night to uh, seven o'clock Eastern Standard Time. 45 watching with 24 likes. Thanks, Jimmy, I appreciate it. Thank you guys, thank you so much, I appreciate it. Um, all right, I'm really getting out of here because I dragged these things on too long. Thank you guys so much. I can't find my mouse again. I can't find my mouse again. Hold on. All right, guys, thank you so much. Be good to each other. Keep shooting. Later.